YTM uh, stands for yield to maturity. Yield to maturity. So, what is this yield to maturity? As the name says, yield refers to return. Return that you will get in your bond if you hold it till maturity. So, if you hold your bond till maturity, you will get uh, the, the return that you will get that is called as yield to maturity. Okay. Assuming you are uh, reinvesting all the all the payment or all the interest that you are getting. So, in that case, the actual return that you get is yield to maturity. So, fund manager uh, look for YTM uh, before investing. So, we will just understand this better. What is this YTM all about? Let us say, let us take an example of 5 year bond. 5 year bond and it is it is giving your coupon rate which is also called as interest rate. Interest rate of let us say 10 percentage. Its principal amount or the future value is 1000. Uh, IY which is the IY is interest rate per year or the prevailing rate per year in the market is 8 percentage. Now this interest rate per year it acts as my YTM okay yield to maturity. Now how is it possible that is what we are going to see in this uh, session. So how is it possible you know when the company is giving me 10 percentage how is that I am getting only 8 percentage if I hold the bond till maturity I am actually going to get only 8 percentage okay. So, this YTM is more important to know than this coupon rate. So, why so? How do I prove this? That is what we are going to see now here. So, so this is this is the objective of this session to understand this YTM better. Okay, this IY interest rate per year is considered as the YTM. Why so? So, in order to understand this, let us you know on this basis, let us find out the present value of the bond on this basis. So, if I have to find out the present value of the bond, let me draw the timeline first. So, this is your 5 year bond. So, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 year bond. So, at the end of first year, I will get uh, 100 rupees because it is 1000 and 10 percentage of 1000 comes to 100. Second year, I will get again 100. Third year, I will get 100. 4th year I will get 100, 5th year I will get 100 and I will get back the principal amount that I have invested. The principal amount is uh, uh, you know 1000. Now, now what is the present value of this bond? This is what I need to find out first. So in order to find out the present value I will discount this expected cash flows. Okay, So present value of your bond is equal to present value of all its expected future cash flows expected future cash flows so these are the expected future cash flows i'll take the present value so present values formula is future value divided by 1 plus rate of interest to the power n number of periods so this is the future value at the end of one year i will get 100 so which i'm discounting at the rate of the prevailing interest rate is what 8 percentage so at this rate i am discounting okay so when i discount this comes to you can calculate it comes to 92.59 okay it comes to 92.59 then i'll discount the second one 8 percentage for two periods this comes to uh, 85.73 then third one 8 percentage for 3 years so when i discount this comes to 79.38 fourth one i am discounting for 4 periods so that comes to 73.50 and the last 1100 i am discounting for five, 5 periods so that comes to 748.64 so when i add up all this when i add up all this it comes to 1079.8 so this is the present value of the bond 1079.8 
So now imagine that means I am paying 1079, 1079.8 and I will keep getting 100 at the end of the first year, 100 at the end of the second year, uh, 100 at the end of the third year, 100 at the end of the fourth year, 100 at the end of the uh, fifth year and I will get the principal amount 1000 back. So this is the cash flow. Now, why do I say the actual return for me, the yield to maturity is 8% and not 10%? Let's see that now. You see this, I am getting 100 at the end of the first year. So, what will I do with this 100? I will reinvest. That's the assumption. Okay. So, I will reinvest at the prevailing rate of interest. What is the prevailing rate of interest? It is, it is 8%, which is mentioned here, 8%, IY 8%. So, when I am reinvesting at the rate of uh, 8 percentage, so I will reinvest. I want to find out what is the cash flow at the end over here. So I am reinvesting. So when I reinvest, so it will be 100. Now it will get compounded for 1, 2, 3, 4 periods. So 1 plus, so I am finding the future value here. So future value is equal to present value into 1 plus rate of interest to the power n. So here it will interest. And that is for 1, 2, 3, 4 periods. So, 4 periods. So, when I calculate, it will come to 136.04. Similarly, at the end of the second year, I will get again 100, which again I will reinvest. So, 100 is growing at the rate of 8 percentage. So, this 100 is growing at the rate of 8 percentage for now this time 1, 2, 3, 3 periods. So that comes to 125, 125.97. Similarly for the third one, 100, now this will grow at the rate of 8 percentage for 2 periods. So that comes to 116.64 then the fourth one this is growing for one period so 100 into 1 plus 8 percentage for one so that comes to 108 okay and the last one i am getting 100 and 1100 uh, thousand so now this i am getting at the end so i will take this as it is so that is 100 i am getting and i am getting thousand so let me add up all this so the total future value that i am going to reap at the end of the five years okay assuming i am invest reinvesting all the coupon payments of 100 at eight percentage so in that case the total return the total amount that i am going to get at the end is when i add up all this i get 1586.66 this is the amount i am getting at the end so it is as good as i invested okay it is as good as I invested 1079.8 and I am getting 1586.66 okay so in that case again let me write another timeline here so 101234 so I invested 1079.8 so 1079.8 this is what i invested and what i am going to get at the end is 1586.66 okay so this is the cash flows final now based on this if i find out the return what is the return that i am getting so how i can find out is so what i need to find out is compounded annual growth rate compounded annual growth rate the formula is like ending value which is 1586.66 Six, 6 divided by opening value which is what i paid initially 1079 now this this is for five years i want to find out the growth for you know uh, uh, for for one year so one year i will compress it to one year so how will i compress it to one year this is for five years so i'll do one by five the formula is one by n so i'm doing one by five so for five years it will be compressed to one year and then i'll do minus one so when i calculate i will get 
8 percentage okay so that means finally i am getting 8 percentage at the end of 5 years i invested 1079 you can, you can cross check like this i, I invested 1079.8 uh, it was growing at the rate of 8 percentage for 5 years if i calculate i will get 1586.66 okay so this is so this is the return yield to maturity i am getting if you want to do this in uh, you know if you want to do all this calculation in in uh, ba2 texas calculator cfa calculator so if you want to do this in ba2 texas calculator how you can do this is uh, keep the n as you know 1234 1234 5 so keep the number of period as 5 in your calculator uh, then iy is what you need to find out present value will be minus 1079.8 then payment uh, 100 you are getting each year future value it is 1000 compute iy you will get 8 percentage so this is your yield to maturity yield that you are getting for for keeping this bond till maturity so that's why this is called as yield to maturity this is equal to yield to maturity fine thank you thanks a lot